Okay, so now that we have done the have we rectifier, we can start looking at peak detectors. So if you recall from the previous activity, if we have an AC signal, and we put a diode in the path to a load, it's our load, what we do is have wave rectification, meaning if our input looks like this, our output, the diode only conducts during this region, and so we get a rectified waveform. So our we'll output voltage across the load. Rectifiers are important circuits for power supplies, battery charging, demodulation, communication circuits, etc. So this is the half-wave rectifier. And it is known as the half wave rectifier because you are doing it for the really half wave. We are going to see the full wave rectifier in just a second. So, what happens if we want to smooth this out? For instance, in the context of a power supply application, we will want, ideally, what we want is a constant supply, maybe a lower constant supply, maybe something like this but it is stiff. Or we may want to just detect peaks. Right? So for that, we can create a peak detector. And the peak detector, effectively, all we are doing is adding a capacitor here. Right. And so what's going to happen in this case, let's analyze it, the circuit. So this is the, this is our input signal. Ideally, we have seen that if we had a, an ideal diode, we will get something like this, right? A short during the during half wave we are actually conducting. This will be a short. Then it is reverse bias. This is our output. Okay. If we add this capacitor, now what happens? Oh, oh and ideally, let's do the idea. Uh, not ideally, that's ideally. In practice, we are going to get less than that, right? 0 0.7 volts less. And our peak here is the Vm minus 0 0.7 volts, right? Assuming that that's the magnitude of the input voltage. Vm. With the capacitor, what we do is that the capacitor is going to charge during this period, and then when the voltage is less, it's going to discharge. So we have something like this. It detects the peak, so to speak. Well, that's why we call it a peak detector. Now, depending on the value of the capacitor, you may have something like that, or you may have something that looks more like this, to charge it, and it discharges faster. For a smaller capacitor, you will see that behavior. As the capacitor value increases, as capacitor goes up, you are making it stiffer, meaning you charge it, and you keep it for longer. Now, you can use this to go from a half-wheel rectifier to a power supply, although typically we're going to do that with a full wave rectifier, but you may do it to just detect peaks. Let's imagine that you are in an instrumentation application or in a testing application, and you want to see that if you have any peak in the circuit, that you will keep that voltage. You can do this.
in this case. So let's do this in the context of, a, for instance, a power supply that you wanted to, to keep this relatively constant, but you can tolerate some ripple. The analysis, you're thinking about this as the load current, and this is the capacitor value. We want to know, and you can put several capacitors in parallel, right? We want to know is how to select that capacitor. And so you can say the current voltage characteristics of a capacitor I is equal C dV dt, right? Per capacitor. Or you can approximate this as that the current is capacitors rate of change of the voltage over the rate of change right time or we can see that in this case the time is from here to here approximately it's not exactly it's a little bit less but we could say okay this is approximately this okay notice that in a halfway rectifier the frequency of the output is the same as the frequency of the input and so we could say well my capacitor, I can select it as approximately, and this will be a conservative design, so it's good, if a load current times this time period, so imagine that this was an AC to DC conversion, can be like this, this is 1 over 60 hertz. We're going to do an example with a full wave rectifier. And the rate of change of the voltage in this case, like this, this is the ripple that you can tolerate. So if you want, as an example, let's imagine that you want a ripple of less than one volt for a load current of how many milliamps, and you have this for the frequency, you are able to know what is the capacitor that you want in order to Detect the peak and either keep it very much constant for a given load current or for a particular ripple. Just this is a selection. Say, okay, 1 volt or 0 0.1 volts, or 0 0.5 volts, how much current you're supplying to the load and what is the timing. Again, peak detector. You could use this to create your initial power supply although you better to do it with a full wave rectifier because you're going to use a smaller capacitors. But you can use this also in test engineering applications, instrumentation applications to detect peaks. Peak inverse voltage in this case, notice that the capacitor, the, the diode is not conducting from here, in this case, all the way to here. So it's approximately equal to the peak inverse voltage, approximately equal to two times Vm. Remember that the breakdown voltage of the diode needs to be the less than the peak inver inverse voltage. So for instance, if this was a 20 volts, you can have a reverse bias situation with your diode of 40 volts, close to 40 volts. This is slightly less, right? But close to that. And that's a good conservative approximation, a good conservative design. Thank you.